Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, I know, I know I've got to finish the PDP-11 stuff, and that, that's the project right now, but I, I just wanted to look into this thing and see if there was anything that I needed to get, because uh, you know how electronics and shipping times are right now. So let's look at this thing right quick and maybe take some stuff out of it. Um, it's already half disassembled. I don't have any screws for the case or anything. Um, and see what all we might need to get to get this thing going and maybe just test the power supply and the uh, high voltage on the CRT right quick. Um, so this is the Capro 2 uh, that, um, that I obtained recently. That's, that's Capro number 2, not um, Roman numeral 2. There was a Capro 2 and a Capro 2, which are two different machines. Are you confused yet? There was also a Capro 1, which was made after both the Capro 2 and the Capro 2, I think. And uh, there was also a Capro 4, but I don't think there was a Capro 4. Whatever. It has a nice size CRT. What, what size is this? What, 9 inch or something like that? It's, uh, I mean... That's, that's a lot better than the one in the Osborne, yeah. So we've got a nice 9-inch CRT here. Much more usable than that little 51 character or whatever it is uh, thing on that Osborne. So um, that's, that's cool. I think, um, I think that's cool. Uh, a couple of disk drives. I don't know what brand disk drives these are, but obviously this one's fucked up. I'd like to have one working disk drive in it, but uh, the faceplate... The faceplate's starting to break off of this one down here, even though it's still intact, but maybe we can fix that, I don't know. Um, of course I haven't tried to power the thing up yet because there's a bunch of shit hanging off of it. So here's the inside of the Capro 2. We've got a main board here and we've got some, um, some, some third-party expansion in here, as you can see. Uh, it has a um, Advent Product Turbo ROM version. 3.4, which, um, according to my very cursory reading, is something that allows it to use double-sided disk drives um, as well as hard drives. There is no hard drive in this thing, but I, these may be double-sided disk drives. If they are, that would be nice. Um, it's got this board that uh, plugs into the CPU socket, I assume, because this is the Z80 CPU sitting on top of it, and it's got all of these um, dip-style pins on here, but they are all they are all fucked up um, and will need to be replaced, so I'm gonna have to get some pin headers like that. I should probably write all this down. Well, if I end up needing that much, then I'll start writing it down later. And I've, I've got a document where all of these fly wires go. Okay, I had to stop and look, look that up. The 7406, of course, is an inverter, but the, uh, the 74151 is a, is a multiplexer of some kind, and the 7445 is a BCD to decimal converter. So, basically, you give it a 4-bit binary input, and it selects one of 10 outputs, I, I think. Um, my assumption is that this must have something to do with drive select logic, maybe, or or maybe there's some funny business going on with um, selecting between um, single-sided and double-sided disks, because I assume you can read single-sided uh, disks on a double-sided drive. Uh, you just got to tell it or something. I, I don't know. Hopefully I can find some documentation on that. I think if we very carefully unplug this disk drive connector, pin one of pin one is this way, note to self when we go to put it back together, but I, th I think if we if we unplug this disk drive cable, we can probably take the whole motherboard out without touching any of this schmoo here. This is the printer port right here. It's a big Centronic style connector rather than a DB25 connector. That's kind of interesting. And we've got a big uh, copper sheet on the bottom. That must be for, uh, well this thing was made before the FCC's RFI rules, I guess that's, oh, that's to shield the CRT from uh, board magnetics or, and vice versa to keep the CRT from crawling um, 
from the clock signals and shit on the board, I bet. Okay. 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 So, well, that's interesting. There's a split in this cable. It goes into the insulation on some of those wires. It's not a clean split between the um, between the wires on the cable. We'll have to we'll have to deal with that, I guess. Let's 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 take the um, the disk drives out next. All right. So someone put hex head cap screws into the side of the fucking disk drives. I'm too lazy to go out to my truck and get my Allen keys, so we'll just take those out the uh, the redneck way since um, I'll put regular screws back in. Uh, we'll uh, we'll take this screw out and then the whole floppy drive will fall down. So let's let's disconnect the floppy cable. Now I assume that this is an honest to god Shugart disk interface rather than that. IBM compatible nonsense with the twisted cable, so it shouldn't matter uh, which way the cable goes back in there. I dub the parts, my old friend. Mitsubishi disk drive. Okay, now let's get the other disk drive out. It appears that some other gentleman beat me to the punch as far as stripping out the inside of this cap screw, so we'll have to get medieval, I suppose. If this doesn't work, I guess there's always the cutting torch, huh? Hmm. Are you gonna turn now, you bastard? That's what I thought. Oh shit, get away from that CRT neck, you dirty little bastard. Hmm. Why? Why is it not in a cage? Now this one, yeah, there's some some brokenness here. This uh, this plastic has come apart right here, but uh, I suspect that um, some clever application of super glue and a drill can probably pair this damage. Oh, oh, now that's some. That's some fancy action right there. Next, I think we need to remove this drive tower. You know what? We are going to have to take all this CRT and shit out of here because the case is bent back here, and I'm going to end up, I'm going to end up having to put that in the press to straighten it out because there's a, there's a bitty bitty screw in plate down here underneath of it that's also bent. I'll never. I'll never bend that bastard by hand, at least not right. There we go. Gee, the whiz. Somebody didn't want that to come out. There's masking tape, electrical tape, and duct tape, so... Alright, yeah, so here is a closer shot of that custom ROM that's in this thing. Here's a closer view of the mods on that... Uh, that one uh, LSI I see. Uh, 1793 is of course uh, the floppy disk controller, but I was too dumb to remember that when we were uh, talking before. Uh, so I had to look it up and now I feel stupid, but that's alright. So um, this pin down here that the blue wire connects to, that's a, uh, that's a test pin. It's a active load test pin. It says to um, in the in the in the 17 uh, 1793 data sheet. It says to tie that to negative five volts, um, unless you're using a voice coil actuated motor. Uh, I didn't look any deeper than that. Uh, anyway, this one here is the ready signal, um, and they both go over here to this board and so here's that uh, that ready signal going to P2 right there uh, this uh, this P3 line here goes to this clipper on her which is is tied to the 5 volt supply on this IC down here uh, it could be any of these ICs any of these 7400 ICs they all Draw their pin, their power up on that pin right there. So that's where it's getting power from. Um, 
and then this blue wire that was hooked to that test line on the floppy drive controller I see is soldered onto the ground pin of this inverter here. But I don't know, so my guess is it was supposed to be hooked to, uh, to P1 here for some reason, but for some reason the guy that installed it decided not to attach it to P1 um, and instead to tie it to ground here. I don't know, I haven't looked for the manual for this stuff yet, so those, those are all of the mods that I can see to the motherboard. There's the Z80 CPU down there on the bottom, and uh, there are the mashed up pins that are supposed to plug into the CPU socket on the motherboard. and. Uh, here we've got a couple of, uh, zoom out, maybe it'll focus better. Focus, damn it! There's a 244, that's a, uh, uh, that's a tri-state inverter, right? Yes. And that's a, um, 245, that's the, that's the bus driver that we all know and love. Um, there's a, uh, 74, what is it, 367, uh, what is a 74, 367, I don't know what that is, we're going to have to look that one up, that is a hex buffer, a tri-state hex buffer with non-inverting outputs, 7404 is, uh, that's just a regular old hex inverter, right, yeah, yeah, that's a regular hex inverter, and the, the 7406 is the open collector inverter, right? It, maybe it's the other way around. I can never remember. Uh, actually, I could look it up since I'm on the page already, and I'm not know for sure. Uh, yes, the 7404 is the regular hex inverter. 74164, I don't know what that is either, because I am stupid and not qualified to be making these videos in the first place. Anyway, um, ah, it's a, it's, a, it's a shift register. That's interesting. So, 8-bit serial in parallel out shift register. With 8 bits across here, this is a megabyte RAM card for, 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 for a Z80 machine. That's a lot of memory for a Z80. Um, maybe it was used as some kind of RAM drive or something like that? I mean, without battery backup, that would kind of be um, be annoying. But I guess you know you you could boot off of floppies and have have it copy all the shit to your RAM disk, and then you'd be super fast. I'm gonna have to find some documentation, take some pictures, and post them to the Vintage Computer Federation forums, and find some stuff out. Uh, but like I said, I want to finish the H11 before before I chase any more shiny squirrels. I've got to focus better. I've got this really terrible habit of starting projects and never finishing them. So I've got to finish the H11 before we get into this thing. Here's the mashed up disk drive and as you can see, I think kind of see, now you can see a little better if I close it, uh, that does appear to be a double-sided disk drive, so that's kind of neat. Uh, cool. Okay, so I found out a little bit more about this this RAM expansion. Unfortunately, it's not banked RAM. It is a RAM disk, and um, it's interfaced to the CPU through some I.O. ports or something. You access it the same way as a hard drive, apparently. You, you set a track number and a sector number on some I.O. ports and then read or write um, a value to or from another I.O. port or something like that. So it's not um, it's not general purpose RAM, sadly. That's it for now. Like I said, I'm gonna finish the H11 before I get into this thing. I'm gonna set all the rest of this stuff aside until the H11 is finished. Okay, that's all for now. See you later.